Hey guys, welcome to the gun shop. Today we are going to be looking at this, the Seiko Carbon Light, which I've taken apart so that we can actually have a little look at how it's built. But first, let's have a look over the whole film. So at the back here we have a very hard recoil pad, nice, solid, um, and actually what you want is a hard recoil pad on a, a harder hitting gun, which this will be, being uh, two and a half kilos. This one weighed in at two kilos, 495 grams. Actually what you'll find is these harder pads do give you slightly more recoil reduction than a soft one, which makes no sense uh, until you watch it in slow mo. The stock is carbon fiber, and this is where a lot of the expense comes in and why it's called the carbon light. It is the lightweight barrel with the carbon stock. Stud fitted, nice cutouts, very stylized, a really good looking rifle. Slight palm swell, very sort of edged angular four in there, nice flat bottom, makes for a very versatile bag shooting rifle, easy to find a rest for. Also fits the hand quite nicely. Trigger, fully adjustable Seiko trigger, adjustable from two pounds to four pounds. However, actually when you take most of them to their lightest, a lot of them go do, do go below two pounds and with a little bit of work, you can have them running real nice and consistently about one and a quarter if you want. However, one and a quarter pounds is insanely light. Uh, certainly for a rifle which has the same intended use as this. Standard Seiko action. This is a short action, Trapper 250, in that you can open the bolt, put it on safe, lock the bolt, and that third positional button there, push that down, the bolt comes up and is then released via that button there. Standard three lugs with the little runners on the sides of those lugs there that keep this rifle feeling very smooth, very nice. And it is, of course, control round feed. Push in base plate to release the mag and full metal magazine. Mild and uninteresting discovery, I just discovered you cannot put the bolt in uh, when the safety's on. And that makes much of a difference. The stainless barrel comes in this lightweight, fluted affair, threaded in 14 by one. And the Intrepid 50 has a 14 in one twist rate. Altogether, a lovely rifle. I don't need to lord the quality of Seiko actions, we all know. What really this one you're paying for is the stock. So let's take it apart and have a little look what actually goes on inside. So essentially what I've got in my hands here, the carbon fiber stock is what we are paying for. This gun is two and a half thousand pounds, so it's not particularly cheap. And most of that not being in the action, seeing as this action is available in other stocks for less money, is right here in my hands, the carbon fiber stock. They use carbon fiber for two reasons, weight and rigidity. Weight because there is none, and if you want a lightweight rifle instead of training hard, uh, because you know we all have sort of lives and the ability to go out and, and train carrying a rifle up a hill is, is quite difficult for a lot of us. And rigidity because lightweight stocks that are not rigid are not great for accuracy, consistency, or shootability in particular. Rigidity wise, there's plenty of tests out there on carbon fiber stocks, but believe me, they are not weak they got a nice little bit of flex through them and that's putting all of my weight behind that stock there um, hoping that i don't break it because that could be a very expensive mistake but it is it's strong beware though there's a lot of carbon fiber stocks out there that are just carbon shell uh, this is a true carbon fiber stock and as such you do pay for it cheap carbon fiber rifles genuinely aren't really carbon fiber and the way you can tell is most of the reason we've taken it apart is you can see the way this has been laminated put together you can also look down through your screw holes there to see what is on. The other reason I took this rifle apart was to see how it was bedded. We have a video out there that will probably never make it into production of a rifle, a Seiko rifle, that wasn't bedded correctly. So I wanted to pop it apart and see how it was bedded. The answer is, is there's no pillars, there's no nothing, there's no bedding block, there's, there's literally nothing here apart from the two carbon fiber holes. But because carbon fiber is as rigid as it is and doesn't succumb to compression the same as a lot of other materials, this should not be an issue. You'll notice there's a little gap around the back of the tang when we've got it all together and actually it is designed so that it can kind of wibble around in there. Would I prefer if it was true pillar bedded or had a nice big single Allen Milling bedding block? Possibly. Does it need it? No. I've shot one of these in 243 and you know it was as accurate as you'd want it to be. 
so it doesn't need much more. And from some of these that have been out now for three and a half years, there's been no issues with accuracy. There's also been no real issues with uh, delamination and all of the uh, scary things that come with carbon fiber rifles, all of the sort of scare tactics. A lot of the bad rep of carbon fiber rifles and carbon fiber, carbon fiber rifle stocks comes from the cheap and crap ones. Seiko luckily use quite a good product and as such, it lasts. Like I said, it takes the majority of my weight. I would love to do a pull up on this, uh, but if it broke, I think I would be quite scared. Do you think Seiko would honor that, honor that on warranty? Uh, oh. I think, I think we've actually survived now quite good. My feet did get off the floor. Let's try it again. You look at that. I think actually it's this little bit of wooden trim that's crunching, not the stock. So I'd say that's good. Anyway, I wouldn't do that on a standard synthetic stock because I've broken a couple of those in the past by doing stupid things. No, not personally, but I've seen plenty broken in the past by doing, is it doing not stupid things, but things. Uh, there have been a couple of reports of these breaking and both of the ones I could find online it was in situations that any other stock probably would have broken. Large falls, large drops, things that you couldn't expect anything really to do. However, for the most part, and for the few people I know who have these, you can treat them real rough and they don't have too much of an issue. Uh, the, the last sort of rubberized lacquer they use on it is, is good, but it does mark with large dings. And if I can show you on here, there is one little mark on this demo rifle stock, just in the front there. I know. It's not a lot, but that was quite a big whack. That was from having a bipod on that got a bit of a ding and actually pushed it back over the rubber sings into the four in there. So it's, yes, they do mark, but that's kind of the flip side of having a rubberized stock. So this stock on the Seiko is rubberized coated. It has a sort of rubberized paint over it. What that allows you to do is not have the standard sort of cold, slippy, missing something finish you get on a lot of carbon fiber rifles. And that's quite nice in itself. It has got a slight right hand palm swell and that grip fills your hand perfectly. And with that rubberized coating, your hand has a tendency to kind of, it does stick there. It's nice, what can I say? Anyway, let's put it back together and conclude. At two and a half kilos, this gun is very, very light. Not entirely the lightest gun on the market in, it, in its class, but still very light. How does it handle? Actually with the short barrel, the fluting and everything, it's not too bad when it's naked. Obviously, when you put a moderator on the front and a big heavy scope and kind of defeat the point of having this super lightweight rifle, you are going to tip the balance forward. However, by the time you stick a bipod on the front, you're going to carry all the weight at the front anywhere for bipod or sticks or anything. As a freehand shooting rifle, I would probably put the lightest little scope I could on there. Probably wouldn't go much more than a 40 mil objective to keep the weight down. And if I was going to put a moderator on there, it's going to have to be a lightweight one as well. Really, or else you are just kind of losing weight to gain weight in other places. So you have to be very careful about how you set this rifle up, uh, not to just be shooting yourself in the foot or defeating the object completely. My only qualm is I would have liked to see a slightly higher cheek piece, but you can't have everything. Obviously this is available in left hand as well, if you so desire, and that is a full left hand edition. My only real other issue with it is it's only 400 pounds less than a carbon wolf. And for me and for what I would use a rifle for, the Carbon Wolf would tick that m few more boxes. Obviously it's heavier, but the ability to have all those adjustments and just make that carbon stock fit you for that extra bit of weight would make a lot of difference. However, for a lightweight rifle, you will not beat one of these. I have certain reservations about the carbon fiber, certain reservations about the bedding, and certain reservations about it all, but for the fact that this thing has been around for over three years now with no real major issues, nobody's having any whinges, we've not had any sort of reports or anything bad back on them, they can't be that bad, the bedding's got to be good, the construction's got to be good, and all in all, it's got to be good. The whole thing is well-specced and well-designed. Of course, carbon fiber is kind of the flavor of the year and has been for a couple of years, and if you're gonna do something, the current fashion is just to slap a carbon fibre stock or barrel on it and uh, you'll tickle a lot of people's fancy. But actually as a package this is quite nice and for a carbon fibre rifle this one actually is quite well made. Not that some of them aren't but be careful because some of them aren't. Some of the 85s do have slight ejection issues and it would be wrong of me not to say uh, if you're buying one of these not to be a little bit aware of that however luckily we've never experienced any. So. 
Why is that going to stop you? Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. It's been a beautiful little rifle. I hope you've enjoyed it too. We'll see you next time.